a natural gas pipeline MPS 20 with 0.5 wall thickness, 50 miles long, transport 220 million standard cubic feet per day. The specific gravity of the gas is 0 0.6 and the viscosity is 0 0.000008 pounds per feet seconds. Calculate the friction factor using the Coulombrin's equation. Assume absolute pipe roughness is 750 micro inch. The base temperature and base pressure are 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 14.7 psi. Especially, what is the upstream pressure for an alleged pressure of 800 psi? Now, let's begin for this. We needed to calculate the friction factors now, but before we could begin, let's write down the given values. So now, let's Write down the given data. Now, the given data, the outer diameter of the pipe was given as 20 inches. The wall thickness of the pipe was given as 0 0.5 inches. Why the gas gravity is 0 0.6? The flow rate in standard condition is given as 220 m mm, standard cubic feet per day, which is the same thing as 20, 120. Times 10 raised to plus 6 standard cubic feet per day. Mm. Then also, the viscosity of the gas is 0 0.000000. 000 pounds per feet seconds. And then, and the pipe roughness is given as seven fifty micro inch. Now we are given the base pressure to be fourteen point seven psi. Yeah. and the base temperature to be 60 degree Fahrenheit and this 60 degrees Fahrenheit is the same thing as saying 60 on that to rank kind because what we're supposed to be using here is absolute value so 60 plus 460 will give us what 520 degree rank kind. Then, then the downstream pressure P2, which is the downstream pressure, is 800 psi. G. Now, since we're using, okay, so that is it. And let's convert to absolute because there are sometimes we're going to be using the gauge pressure and the absolute pressure. So to convert to gauge to absolute pressure, we add we add the base pressure to it, which is adding the atmospheric condition, which will give us eight as the atmospheric condition as standard. Uh, that is a standard condition. So if you add 14.7 to this, 
we have 814.7 psi a so we have gotten, gotten, gotten all this the given information now the internal diameter d is equal to let's say calculate so these are the calculated uh, data now the outer diameter the outer diameter will not be sorry the internal diameter d will equal to the outer diameter minus two times the wall thickness because if you if there is a pipe like this now this is the thickness of the pipe uniformly all through now this is the here is the in, internal diameter here lydex is the outer diameter so when you check the outer diameter is equal to this t plus t plus t so if you look at it you see that the outer diameter is equal to d plus 2t so d which is the internal diameter is equal to the outer diameter minus 2t so that is how this is written. so now we have 20 minus 2 times 0 0.5 so 20 minus 1 this will give us was 19 inches so the internal diameter is equal to what 19 inches so that is what we're going to be using in most of our calculations now for us to determine the nature of the flow um, of, of the gas flowing let's do it. whether it's um, laminar flow or top top line flow we need to calculate our Reynold number so our Reynold number so the formula for Reynold number is 0 0.0004778 times the base pressure divided by the base temperature times gas gravity times flow rate in standard cubic feet divided by divided by um, viscosity the product divided by the product of viscosity and density and uh, and um, internal diameter sorry so now this is where we're going, what we are going to use where where pb is the base uh, is the base pressure this is in psi a why this is the base temperature in rank time yg is gas gravity so this is dimension dimensionless so we have the flow rate which is the volume flow rate hmm? the volume flow rates of the gas this is in standard cubic feet per day now you also have the viscosity viscosity of the gas this is in pounds per feet seconds now this is what we're going to use now. 
Now let's calculate the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number will now be 0 0.0004778. Times <coughs> the base pressure, which is fourteen point seven, divide by the base temperature, which is five twenty, times the gas gravity, which is zero point six, <coughs> times. The flow rate, which is 220 times 10 raised to plus 6, divided by the, the viscosity, which is 0 0.00008 pounds per feet seconds times the internal diameter, which is 19. So let's use our calculator <coughs> to calculate this now. We use our calculator. So what we get now is zero point zero 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 four seven seven. Eight times fourteen point seven divided by five twenty times zero point six times two two zero. Exponential six divided by zero point zero 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 eight divided by nineteen quarter. Divide by nineteen. Go to this. So this is one point. Okay, I can say thirteen point nine. Thirteen point nine times ten raised to power six. So what we got here was thirteen point nine times ten raised to power six. No. I've gotten the Reynold number. Since the Reynold number is greater than 400, then this it is a turbulence flow. So since it's a turbulence flow, to calculate the calories um, calibrics equation, we are going to use this equation one all over to calculate the uh, friction factor. We're going to use calibrics equation. Which is one all over the square root of f is equal to minus two log e log brackets open e divided by three point seven d plus two point five one divided by Reynolds number friction factor bracket close to base 10 you know we are going to use this equation now if you look at this equation f 
is an implicit function. So we are going to use an iteration method to solve for f. Now we assume f is equal to 0 0.01. So now we are going to use this value in the term, in the whole of this term on the left hand side, so on the right hand side. So what we get, we now solve for this. We now we use this to we use this substitute into this equation. We solve for this one. If it if it does not equate this, we try it, we try with this again. The value we got from here. So let's start. Let's start now. So now, now assuming f is equal to 0 0.01, we now have one all over the square root of f equal to minus 2 log 10 into log, log base 10 into e is 750 times 10 raised to the minus 6 divided by 3.7 times 19 plus 2.51 divided by we know the number which is 13.9 times 10 raised to 4. 6 times the square root of 0 0.01. Now let's calculate this. Now let's go, let's use our calculator again. Now, using our calculator, <coughs> let's first calculate this inside this expression. Uh, we can just say, we can see, we say minus, we just say 2 minus times log okay can go that way so I will just say 750 exponential minus 6 divided by 3.7 divided by 19 plus 2.51 divided by 13.9 divided by divided by the square root the square root the square root you know. Divide by the square root. So, so the square root. Mm -hmm. Okay. Divide by. Divide by zero point zero one raised to power raised to power zero point five raised to power zero point five. So it's the same thing as the square root two now. This whole thing is equal to what this expression is 
So no, 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 this is not correct. This is not correct. Let me this cannot give us plus positive plus one plus zero. No. All right, let me recalculate. Let's recalculate this. There's a mistake somewhere. If I didn't use this 10 is for 6, so let's do it again. 750 exponential minus 6 divided by 3.7 divided by 19 plus 2.51 divided by 13.9 exponential. Six divided by zero point zero one raised to four zero point five equal to yes, correct. Then we now uh, let's see. Um, I need to copy this so this value now I'll just say log okay that's the only thing I don't need to even copy so so but since I say log so it gives me the log of it so now times times 2 minus so Times minus two give us this value. Now I'll calculate the inverse of this value. Let me see whether it work. Okay, correct. This me the inverse of the whole value. So no. I haven't gotten the inverse of that, which is one point zero one. Let me just write it down 1.0195794. Hmm? That is what we got. So now it will not be one all of one. So since the inverse of so what we have gotten is the square root of, let me just delete this and clean it. So what we have gotten is the square root of f. The square root of f will not be equal to, since I have gotten the inverse of the whole of this, which is 9 point something, let me just get these values now. Let me check the history. So, all is and write it down nine eight is nine point eight zero seven nine six six three three. So
Isso. Let me see. The whole of this is nine point eight zero seven nine six six. The inverse, so the inverse of the whole of this it will give you the square root of f, which is equal to 1. Times 10 is to four minus 1. Let's see. Let me see what else minus 2 minus 1. Okay, minus 1, correct. Okay, here is 9, sorry. Here is 9. Here is also 9. So for me to get the f, if I square both sides of this equation, I'll get f. So my f, let's go back to the calculator. My f will not be the square of this answer. So I just click the square, which is what? Okay. Then let's do for minus two. Let me just write it down. I have um, zero point zero zero. Okay, zero point zero one zero. Let me say three nine five four. Let me not dwell on so much of it. Uh, so now F is what? 0 0.010394. Now let's see. Again, let's be sure. Okay, so here when you look at here, it's E, e to or minus two, but if you want to check it, if it's what I wrote is correct, if you click here now, see it's zero point zero one zero three nine five four. So three nine five four three nine five four. Correct. Now, since we have gotten this, you see, it's different from this. So now we're going to use this to calculate to see whether the information will still give us the same value so now let's now assume f is equal to 0 0.010354 now let's solve for this value again where all other parameters will be constant These other parameters will just be the same thing. So the F now will be zero point zero one zero. That is the friction factor three nine five four. So this is what we're going to use. So now let's see, see what it will give us. Let's go back to the calculator and see what it gives us now. So, now using the calculator, you have 750. 
exponential minus six divided by five point seven divided by nineteen plus two point five one divided by thirteen point nine exponential six divided by zero point zero one zero three nine three nine five four raised to power zero point five hmm? equal to so this is so good now let's see let's not calculate the log of it so log this whole value so the inside value is all good so now the log of it is what minus 4.9 something so now we multiply it by two negative two which is minus two give us what nine points let me write it down let me write it down on a piece of paper so i have nine point eight eight one zero three eight four Four one eight four one zero five hmm? zero five. So, so this is what we got now. Now, let's write it down here. If you let's write it, you have. 9.8 it's 103 okay. 104 105 so now if you now get the inverse of this you the inverse of this value will now be the square root of f. So the square root of f will now be the inverse of 9.8103.84105. Now f will be when you square both sides f will not be equal to and it implies that f is equal to the square of one one over one nine point eight one zero three eight four one zero five the square root so let's go back to our calculator So we have this, so now let's calculate the inverse of it. The inverse of that, we're calculating this inverse. Now this is it. So, that is the inverse of it, then if we just calculate, you see, the square of it, we have gotten. So this is our answer. Let's now write it down. Let's write our answer down. So F now would be equal to, let me just write it down, equal to 0 
to our F our F is equal to is equal to zero point zero one zero three nine zero two nine seven four seven four that is our f now so assuming now if you look at this value say you see the, fir the first one was 0 0.010354 so the other one now is 0 0.010390 so this well let's use this one again to see if we can get the same value now i will solve straight the value of f with the calculator so minus 2 log 10 3.7d plus 2.51 divided by Reynolds number square root of f so so mm, let me clean this Now, assuming, so, if we, sorry, if we assume that f is equal to now 0 0.01039029074, now let's solve for the next f question factor. So, we have minus 2 log e is 750. 10 raised to power minus 6 divided by 3.7 times 19 plus 2.51 divided by original number which is 13.9 times 10 raised to power 6 times the square root of 0 0.01039 Zero two nine seven four. This time, so let's now use our calculator. We solve for F straight, not read Marolin. So we will just now see. Now I will just now. Mm. 750 exponential minus 6 divided by 3.7 divided by 19 plus 2.51 divided by 13 0.9 exponential 6 divided by 0 point zero one zero three nine zero two Minus seven four zero no raised to four zero point five equal to this now say log times two minus equal to this now the inverse of feet is this then square so this is our final answer we have e, this is close to this other answer it's close so now that means our f 
let me just write it down. This is the final answer. This is the final answer. It's closer to the other one. Let me just write it down. 0 0.0103. Nine zero three six three six one six seven. So this is our F. So our F is equal to zero point zero one zero nine zero three six one six seven. So if you check now check what, what am I writing this is three nine sorry yes three mm. let me write it properly sorry sorry let me write it properly zero point zero one Zero three nine zero three six one six seven. So if you look at here now, so here is three nine, here is three nine zero three. This is zero two nine. So it's the same now. Do so that means the final answer is friction factor should be equal to zero point zero one zero four. So that is the final answer. So the friction factor is zero point zero one zero four. Let's see the answer. So now we will now use this to go and Calculate for a uh, value that is the upstream pressure. Now, so since we have gotten this, we now need to calculate the upstream pressure. To calculate the upstream pressure, we also need to calculate. Because you see, we were not given the compressibility factor. Now we're going to use the C N G the C N G D method. So now which is Z is equal to one all over one plus Average pressure times three four four one hundred three thousand four three thousand three hundred and forty four thousand four hundred times ten raised to four one point seven eight five G mm -hmm. divide by the gas temperature raised to four three point eight two five eight two five so this might look so now let me just write see where this is the average gas pressure Now let's and this is in PSI G. 
Yes, so since let's assume the average pressure of the gas is 800 psi g, which is for the downstream. We are using the downstream pressure, and uh, we assume the temperature is the same as the base pressure, which the base temperature which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is equal to 520 degree rank and because this the gas temperature the unit is in rank and so on here now g is what the gas gravity and now gas gravity is 0 0.6 so now that's what we're going to do now let's calculate for what said say one or all of them one plus so we're using 800 times 300 344,400 times 10 raised to 4 1.785 times 0 0.6 divided by 520 raised to 4 3.825 So the Z now now let's calculate. So now we have to so say one divided by the brackets open so one plus brackets open we now see 800 800 times 344,400 times 10 raised to 4 1.785 now here we okay and rest for Brackets open and raised to power one point seven eight five times zero point six bracket close. Mm -hmm. and then Bracket closes brackets now. Okay, divide by five twenty and raised to four three point eight two five and then bracket close. Bracket close equal to zero point eight eight two nine. Let me just write it down so equal to zero point eight eight two nine. Zero point eight eight two nine. So this is our Z factor. I can see the Z factor is zero point eight eight three. So we have gotten 
auzit faptul. Um, we also have gotten a friction factor which is 0 0.0104. So, so this is what we're going to do now to calculate. We're going to calculate the value of the upstream pressure. Now, let's now we're going to use this formula to get to do that. Now we are going to use the general flow equation formula. Hmm? This is that the flow rate is equal to seventy-seven point fifty-four times. The base temperature divided by the base pressure times P1 square minus P2 square divided by G times TF times L times ZF times D raised to power 2.5. Now the, the whole of this is raised to point zero point five. Now, now we're looking for the upstream pressure, which is this one. So what we're going to do to get that is we are going to make this upstream pressure. The subject of formula to do that what we're going to do is we're going to say p1 square minus p2 square and we'll divide by g t f l z f all raised to plus 0 0.5 is equal to now, if you did equal to Q, divide by this 77.54. Seven, times PB all over TB. Nice. If you use this, all of this, divide this, it will inverse. It will inverse that, which is what I just did. And then divide by d which is 1 all over times 1 all over d raised to power 2.5 so that is it so now we can all invariably write it this way now again now if you square both sides of the equation if you square both sides now if you square both sides we now cancel out this so we now have p squared p p1 square minus p2 square divided by g t f l z f equal to q all over 77.54 times t raised to power 2.5 times base pressure divided by base temperature all squared now this um, upstream pressure making it subject to formula we now see p1 square is equal to p2 square plus plus what's brackets into q 
on the 77.54 times 10 is 14.5 times this pressure divided by this temperature of squared times G times G T F L Z F is L squared okay. So so this is it. So now to get our P1 you will now be the square root of the whole of this. So now P square P2 square plus Q and it was 77.54 times D is equal to 2.5 times PB all over TB all squared times G T F L Z F all into square roots. So let's now calculate so now p1 we give us say the square root of this whole thing which is um we're using absolute pressure which is 814.7 square plus all into 220 times 10 raised to power 6 divide by 77.54 times 19 raised to power 2.5 times base pressure 14.7 divided by 520 all squared times G, which is gas gravity 0 0.2 times um, gas temperature, which is 520 plus the length, which is 50 miles times the compressibility factor we got was 0 0.883 times the um, the friction factor which is 0 0.0104 oh so this is it this is it so now let's now get the value of p1 let's use our calculator Let's use a calculator. So using our calculator right here now, we have 814.7 square plus plus bracket open. Back up, back up, open. Bracket open. Two hundred two hundred twenty three. Exponential six. Divided by seven seven point five four. Divided by nineteen in raised to power two point five times 
14.7 divided by divided by 520 bracket close you now say square times 0 0.6 times 520 times 50 times 15 15 mm -hmm. times 0 0.83 times 0 0.0 0 Sun is clear. It's the square root of this is equal to sentinels saying raised to power 0 0.5. So we just say raised to power 0 0.5 equal to. 1017 um, points it's so it's 1017 points it's psi a so that is the value for our region or p one that is the upstream pressure now we need to do some other thing we need to also calculate uh you know we assume the average pressure to be 800 now what we're going to do now is to calculate the actual average pressure based on this pressure we have gotten now so the average pressure the formula for average pressure is two over three times p1 plus p2 minus p1 times p2 divided by p1 plus p p1 plus p2 so this is a formula for average so now let's calculate so two over three times p1 will now have will have 1017.8 plus plus now plus now we have 800 814.7 minus mm, minus 1017.8 times 814.7 divided by 1017.8 plus 814.7 so let's see what is our average um let me write this properly so that let me write it let me just erase this I write it properly is minus no now let's use a calculator
So we now say two divided by three times bracket open one hundred and seventeen plus is plus plus it's one four point seven minus brackets open one o one one o one seven point eight times it's one four one seven divide by brackets open one oh one seven point eight plus eight one four point seven bracket close that is the bracket then no bracket close uh, no bracket uh, close no bracket close okay equal to so this is the average pressure so we have have nine one nine point five so nine nine one nine point five psi cia psi so the you know we are using the gauge pressure so the gauge pressure for the average pressure of the gas will be 919.5 minus 14.7 so this will give us what now let's go back to our calculator this will give us what so we are going to say minus 14.7 so we have a 904.8 one nine point eight so nine zero seven nine zero seven point eight psig let me see let me be sure okay zero four point eight so. mm. So zero four point eight zero. Now we're going to use this value now to calculate our z. Now we're going to use this. So we have one over one plus bracket open average pressure times three hundred and forty four. Thousand four hundred times ten raised to power one point seven eight five G divide by gas pressure gas, um, gas temperature raised to power three point eight two five. So so that is it. So now let's. Calculate so now we have one over one plus so this is uh, nine zero four point eight times three hundred and four three hundred and forty four. 
344,400 times 10 raised to power 1.785 g, which is times 0 0.6 divided by the gas temperature, which is 520 raised to power 3.825. So let's calculate our Z now. So let's go back to work. Let's go back to our calculator now. So we have what now? We have say one divided by one divided by Bracket open one plus bracket open so we have nine zero four point eight times three four 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 zero zero times um, 10 raised to power bracket open 1.785 times 0 0.6 bracket close Bracket closes divide by five twenty raised to four three point eight two five bracket close bracket close. equal to 0 0.86 uh, 0.870 yeah so 0.870 is the z factor so our z now is 0 0.870 So now we're going to use this to calculate our our upstream pressure P1, which will not be equal to. Let's see. P1 is P now equal to. Let's use this formula we have here. No, P1 is the square root of. P2 square plus bracket open, sorry, bracket open, Q divided by 77.54 times D is to power 2.5. And then we have this pressure divided by this temperature all squared times G T F L Z F let me see whether that was what so that is what it is so now let's calculate our P1. So P1 will not be. Calculate our P1 using this Z. So uh, since the value is not far from 0 
8 uh, what we we'll use was 0 0.883 so well, let me just calculate let's see whether there is any variation we have 814.7 square plus 220 times 10 to 6 divided by 77.54 times 19 raised to power 2.5 Times 14.7 which divide by 520 all squared times 0 0.6 times 520 times 50 times 0 0.817 times 0. 0, 1, 0, 1. So let's go back to our calculator again. <sighs> let's use our calculator again to calculate our. Uh, uh, so we we'll have here eight one four. Point seven square plus plus um, bracket open okay no 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 Brackets open root to zero exponential six divided by seven seven point five four you divide by nineteen raised to four two point five times fourteen point seven divided by five twenty bracket close bracket close zero is to power two is to power two times zero point six times five twenty times fifty times zero point eight seven zero times zero point zero one zero four equal to this raised to four zero point five equal to one o fifteen point one one o fifteen point one so we have one hundred and fifteen point one psi okay, so we we'll keep on calculating we will not we we'll keep on if you insert this into this other one to get the average velocity to recalculate our z factor now what we're going to do we're going to stop here or if you want to do further iteration you use this to calculate the average pressure calculate the z factor to check if there is no difference between this and the other the value we're going to get let's check if this is closer if the z factor we're going to get that is 
I see the z factor, the compressibility factor we're going to get is closer to this 0 0.870. Then that should be our final answer. This should be our final answer. No need to calculate for that because any value you put here, the variation will be very minimal. Let's check. Because this if any little if any value that is closer to this will give a minimal change to this. So you can see this variation is large from 0 0.883. This is 0 0.817. 0 0.883 is a bit large. The variation is a bit bigger. Now it gives us a little pressure difference of you know this is 1015.1 the now it's 1017 1017.8 so let's check now the average pressure will now be 2 over 3 times uh, 100 1015.1 uh, plus 814.7 times 814.7 divided by 101.5 plus 814.7. So, so we, we use this formula 2 over 3 times P1 plus P2 minus P1 P1 times P2 divided by P1 plus P2. So this is what we use in our way we use. So the average ratio will now be 2 over 3 times the sooner times 1015.1 plus 814.7 minus 1015.1 times 814.7 divided by 1015.1 plus 814.7. So let's go back to calculator. So we have 1015.1. Plus 814.7 minus brackets open minus brackets open. So let me bracket so well let me just use it like that. So one zero one five point one times eight one four Point seven divided by bracket open one zero one five point one plus eight one four sorry eight one four point seven bracket close bracket close equal to this times 2 divided by 3. So we have 9, 918.6 9 we have 918.6 PSIA, which is equal to 
which is equal to, let me see, minus 14.7, which is 903.9 PSIG. So we're going to use this now to calculate our set factor, our compressibility factor. But let me take the this average pressure 903.9. Let me see if the difference will be much. If the difference is not much, we'll stop there. So let's see. So it's nine hundred and three point nine PSIG. Let me see. Okay. Now the Z factor is equal to one all over one plus PS. Yeah, pressure average pressure times three four 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 hundred times ten raised to four one point seven eight five G divided by mm, gas temperature raised to four three point eight two five. So one plus nine zero three point nine times three four 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 hundred times ten raised to power one point seven eight five times zero point six divided by five two eighteen raised to power three point eight no, we see. Mm -hmm. One divide by the brackets open. One plus one plus nine zero three point nine times three four 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 hundred times. Ten raised to four brackets open one point seven eight five times zero point six bracket close mm. divide by Five twenty raised to four three point eight two five bracket close equal to zero point um, so zero point eight seventeen so the same eight point zero point eight seventy so there's no variation no difference. So this gives us the same 0 0.870. So this is a Z factor. And um, that means our oxygen pressure is 101.15.1 PSI A. Sorry. So that is the final answer. Since it gives us the same value. So that's the final answer here 
so we come to the end of this episode this um, problem thank you for watching till the end have a nice day do wait to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that each time i make a new video you will be the first to watch thank you and god bless you